Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. In this video, I'm showing you Reaper's buffer settings and how you can set them up to optimize your system. This is just a clip from the last Q&A episode. If you wanna see the full thing, there's a link in the description below. Next question comes from Matt. Any chance of you exploring the buffering preferences in a tutorial? Seems like some of the settings may be better for low latency recording with effects and other settings better for projects with a lot of tracks, etc. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, there are different settings that you would, might need to change depending on the types of projects that you do. If you're doing a lot of recording through effects and you need that low latency monitoring, there are some certain settings that affect that. And then there's other things where if you're working on a film mix or something like that, there's lots of data that needs to be processed instantaneously. Um, there's some things to manage that as well. So let's have a look at these in Reaper. There's two or three different types of buffers in use in Reaper. Uh, the first one is in the preferences, and we're gonna look at the one for setting your audio device buffer size. So this number here, request block size, that's going to set the interface buffer size. This is going to set the latency for any live inputs and outputs of your system, whether they're audio or MIDI. This also directly affects the CPU performance. So 512 is kind of a middle of the range setting, quite a lot of latency and uh, a fair amount of CPU use. If I set this down to 64, the CPU use is going to increase, but my latency is going to be basically instantaneous. Uh, I can play a guitar chord and not have any noticeable delay going through a, an amp, a cabinet, all those sorts of things inside a Reaper and then coming back to my ears. So depending on the size of your project and what you're doing in the project, this is a good place to start with optimizing the performance. If you're not recording anymore, you don't need to have a low block size here. So you can set that to 512 or 1024 and get a lot more uh, headroom as far as um, processing power at a Reaper. The next preference is the buffering preference here. This sets up Reaper CPU use um, or the way that it uses the CPU. These first couple settings here are going to change for every person. You can have this on auto detect. I personally don't set it to auto detect because uh, after some experimentation, I found that having that off was better. If I have this on, the second setting is going to go to eight instead of six. I have a quad core processor with hyper threading. It sees it as eight cores. And so I would set this to six which gives a little more headroom for other processes. And then jumping down to the bottom, allow live effects multiprocessing on two CPUs. In my mind, if I take away two from this one, I, I can give myself two CPUs to use for live effects. And this is just something I figured out through experimentation. For my system, it seemed to work the best. I tried having this on one, I tried having this on four CPUs. I had this on auto detect, all these to just try to optimize performance. And this is where I ended up. So everything that we've looked at so far has been for signal processing and how the CPU is used for that. The other options here are for media buffering. So media buffer size is how long are we giving Reaper to get the audio off of the hard drives and then start playing it back. Um, the default size is 1200 milliseconds. To me, that's quite a long time. These two settings here for the media buffer size and the pre-buffer affect that short delay you get when you hit the space bar and the audio comes out. If there are no effects on the tracks, uh, this number directly affects how long it takes for the audio to start coming out. So my personal settings for these are half of the defaults. This is the setting that I found has worked really well for both my video projects and all of my audio projects. So having this at half of the default has worked really well on my 2015 MacBook Pro. Not a high-end system by any means, but these defaults are really made for um, people with lower powered CPUs. These defaults really haven't changed since I started using Reaper like 10 years ago. If you go in here and change all the defaults to about half of what is recommended, it's going to feel a lot faster. There's one other buffer size that you need to be aware of and that's for the rendering preference, block size to use when rendering. I like to keep it at 1024. I haven't done a lot of experimenting with this, but I've seen some people on the forum and things uh, run into some plugins that just aren't working quite right when rendering. 
And this is one factor where the sounds could change or just plugins don't work when rendering. So I keep mine at 1024. Uh, if you have this blank, then it's going to use the audio device block size. Whenever you're rendering something through the render window that has effects on it, it's going to use that value. For me, that has worked really well. And hopefully this will help you as well. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog community, support the Reaper Blog through Patreon at patreon.com slash the Reaper Blog, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. Thank you.